2203 horizontal input model right so we know that that means that it has a pot mounted PCB in this amp right um, I posted a clip I've got a 2204 of a 1986 variety from memory and I showed how we took that back to early 80s spec this amp however this sounds pretty good straight out of the gate this one I'm pretty impressed i've just literally plugged it in going through some basic tones i've got everything pretty much set at midday i've got the master about 10 a.m and i've got the preamp going at about 3 p.m i've noticed two small problems with the amp straight out of the gate a couple of uh dodgy pots here so the master pot and the treble both need a clean up i'll demonstrate <laughs> clean up okay no problem the amps actually come in to be uh, just a basic mod right it's going to be modded we're going to take this into the Jake E Lee style uh, hot rodded 800 which I have posted a video on previously probably a couple of videos to be fair um, I actually modded my 1980 2203 to that spec and demonstrated how to actually implement those mods into that style of Marshall with the um, uh, chassis mounted PCB. So what we'll do today is I'll show you how to implement that basic uh, Jakey Lee style mod to one of these horizontal mount JCM 800s, right? We'll take it out to the bench, I'll show you how to do it and we'll bring it back in here and we'll have a listen to how it sounds. Stick around guys. All right, we've taken this beast out of the head shell. Very interesting, all right? So this is, as we know, all right, a horizontal input 2203, but look at the filter caps. Two, three, four, five, right? So this is in that kind of transition era that even though they flicked over to, Marshall flicked over to the um, horizontal input, at this point, 1985, and it looks like second of the fourth 85 here on the tag, um, that at that point they hadn't actually reduced the filtering on these 2203s, right? So this is a nice era. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. The other thing that's pretty obvious, of course, is that at some point in its life, someone screwed in an extra preamp tube which is no longer used. The owner of the amp told me that um, uh, it had been returned to stock. All right, so it had been modded in its life, obviously, and it has been returned to stock. The other thing I want to show, if I can bring this on the camera, this is the back of the amp. The switch here. Again, I was told that it's not connected to anything. <laughs> um, we'll see, right, when we flip this around. Everything else looks kind of okay. Obviously, the DI here has been has come out and is no longer being no longer used. Let's flip it over. Right. Well, pretty interesting. Okay. So it's had uh, pretty much all of the coupling caps replaced um, with these sozos. Very interesting. Um, I need to have a look, closer look at that. But yeah, that looks like the whole, I have to check all these values, but it looks like the whole amp's been modded in that regard. The resistors all look original, except for that one. Uh, that looks original. I'm not sure about these bias caps here. They look like they might have been replaced, which is fine. Um, the screen resistor has been replaced. These ones here look original, I th I'd guess. And this one here has been replaced over its life. 
couple of these um, these grid stopper resistors here. They've been replaced. A couple of originals, a couple of new ones there. Here we've got this preamp tube that's been added, and it it God, it almost looks like it hasn't even been used. I mean, I know it has, but there's no solder on this part on this tag board here. A couple of components added to this one. Oh, there's some solder there that looks like it's been removed out. So it looks like maybe they used one side of the triode for an extra gain stage there, but it looks like it's been restored fairly nicely. Um, so from here, I'll flip this board out and we'll make a start on replacing or modding, um, you know, the handful of components that are required. To bring this up to Jake E. Lee spec. Um, let's get into it. I've noticed a couple of other uh, mods in here, right, which would contribute to the amount of gain that this thing was delivering, uh, you know, when I just tested it, right. It, it certainly, to, to my ear, sounded like it had more gain than most stock uh, 2203s that you will play and there are two reasons for that just on inspection number one this replaced resistor here which I called out before it's not the same value right that is normally a 10k cold clipper this is a cathode resistor for the second gain stage all right that's actually a 4k7 Resistor, right? We deliver more gain. You get no longer really a cold clipper, but we'll deliver a lot more gain um, out of the second gain stage compared to the stock 800. You also see this cap here. It's not really contributing to the gain, but that cap is sitting across the grid resistor, who's operating as a um, frequency filter on there to change, uh, slightly alter the. Um, response of your guitar signal on the way in. I'll pull that out. I don't think we need that. This big Sozo cap here, it's 0.68 mic, uh, 0.68 microfarad. What that is, right, that is actually um, sitting as a bypass cap on the 820 ohm resistor, which is the cathode resistor to the third gain stage. This one here, this yellow wire, it's the cathode of the third gain stage, right? Gain stage one, two, three. You'll see in Marshall amps, right, that cathode resistor will either be an 820 ohm or a 1K, depending on the exact circuit. It's 820 in this circuit. It's hiding behind this massive cap here. And this 0.68 microfarad is bypassing it, right? So that's delivering uh, more gain. So very common trick. This is actually stock in a number of um, Marshall amps actually and well you'll see this in lots of different amps where you know you put a bypass cap on that third gain stage like that very common and in fact in the Jakey Lee mod this is a 22 microfarad in that mod um, really makes that third gain stage sing I'm going to try this with that leaving that there I don't think I'm going to change it to a 22 microfarad I think we'll try it with that 0.68 and see how it sounds because it's securely in there if it sounds good I'll leave it alone um, the other thing I've noticed is that these scratchy pots they're really greasy like some some point someone's sprayed I can smell it too I'm sure of it WD-40 into these pots I'm sure of it I can smell that kind of familiar metallic kind of smell. Um, not a good idea, right? I will try and deoxys with a proper electrical cleaner. Might need to pull the pots apart. I hope not. One thing about these uh, pot-mounted PCBs, right? This era of JCM800, pretty easy to work on, right? So let me just put that back. So all I've done here to work on the PCB, right? Pull all the knobs off, unscrew these pots, unscrew the two jacks, and then you literally can pull this out and just flip it over. Right, you can get underneath the board 
without having to unsolder anything, which in some ways, well, in all ways actually, they're easier to work on than uh, the style of PCB that preceded it with the, you know, the ST1 board chassis mounted, right? You can't, you can't mod it as much, right? Because with the pots on the PCB, you're a bit more limited as to what, how you can change the amp if you're looking to, you know, do a Ho Jose style pre-tone stack master or whatever. It's still possible, but a bit more work. But to do a mod like this, we were just kind of changing some values in the existing 2203 circuit. It's a bit of a doddle. Easy. And just to run through the mods we're going to make, right? And I'll, again, I'll do this in reference to the modded 2204 schematic. I've referenced this diagram a number of times on the channel. This is the first coupling cap here. This is a 22 nanofarad at the moment. We're going to change that to 2.2 nanofarad. Okay. That will drop some bass out of the preamp, make the amp tighter. This non-stock 4K7 resistor, we're going to change this to a 2K7 bypass with a 0.68 microfarad cap, um, which will replicate basically what's happening on the first gain stage here. This is 2K7 with 0.68 microfarad. Um, so that, that will cascade into this gain stage. That'll give us a fair amount of gain. I do need to put a 220K resistor across the gain pot just to reduce uh, the gain at that point in the amp a little bit. I'll figure out how I do that. I'll probably mount it underneath the pot here. That'll be easy enough. Um, as I said, this 820R resistor, cathode resistor on the third gain stage, I'm going to leave that as is. Normally I'd put 22 or a 47 microfarad there, but I'm just going to try that as is. Then on the uh, the cathode follower resistor, which is off this cathode here on V2B, um, hiding around over here, we will put a 47 picofarad cap to ground, which acts as a bypass filter, just filters out a bit of high end. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, put a depth circuit into the amp, right? So the negative feedback line, which is this purple wire here, which runs into here, into a 100K resistor. We're going to change that. I'm going to put a uh, fixed depth in here, and we'll probably move this to 47K, um, just so we get a little bit more negative feedback coming into the amp. And um, yeah, that is all there is to it. I can just show you what I do to get components out of boards like this, right? So I have one of these. Best tool you can invest in if you're doing a lot of work like this. It's a solder sucker or a desoldering gun, right? So, what you can do with this, place it over the component, mounts the solder, and then you suck it away. Simple as that. It allows you to, it allows you to pull the component out, really trying to minimize any damage to the PCB, you don't have to heat, heat it up and try and pull the thing out as you go, and you can see this cap is just coming out now, look at that, piece of cake. Alright, well, the changes are in, pretty straightforward really, so this 22 nanofarads come out, this is a 2.2 nanofarad Wilma cap right slot straight in made for this pcb here's our 2k7 with a 0.68 uh microfarad bypass cap that's an uh mk mkt 1813 uh viche cap um shout out to my mate shia who sent me some of those awesome 
uh, as I said, I left that in place. This is the 100K, uh, 100K cathode resistor on the cathode follower. It was actually measuring 120K, right, that resistor. I pulled it out and I measured it with the meter, 120K, so I've replaced it. Brand new 100K resistor there, and that's the 470 picofarad uh, cap to ground. Shaves off some top end. And what else have I done? This was the 100K um, negative feedback resistor. I've moved that to 47K. So we're going to get more negative feedback into the amp, right? Um, and here's my fixed depth, right? 220K resistor with a 4.7 nanofarad uh, cap here. So very common to see that kind of arrangement when you just want to set up a fixed depth, right? 4N7 with a 220K, you can't go wrong. And the other change, of course, is the 220K resistor across uh, the first gain pot here. So, as I mentioned, I was planning on put that, putting that underneath the board. That's what I've done, right? So you're just going to run that from the input to the gain across to the ground. Um, easiest way to do it, I think. So while I've got the amp open, what always pays do a full bias check, right? So it's obviously 100 water. It's got four EL34s, so the JJs. Um, so I've actually kind of gone across and just moved the, the bias probe here across all, all four. They're all nicely balanced, which is good, but this is running really cold bias, right? So we're drawing at idle, you know, 22, let's call it 23 milliamps. Now this thing's got a plate voltage of 461 volts uh, at this bias setting. It's about 44% plate dissipation really cold right I, I like to set amps like this at about 65 percent so you want to be drawing about 35 milliamps give or take um, is how i will dial this in so i'll adjust that always worth checking right so you know this is a 1985 amp these aren't the original tubes that's for sure so they're either just been thrown in without being rebiased or it's drifted over time or someone did bias it, but they didn't know what they were doing. All right, last but not least, um, I've adjusted the voltages here, right? So this, like my the 2204 video, um, where I demonstrated the difference between horizontal input and vertical input, and I showed how to convert a, a horizontal 2204 back to early 80s vertical spec, even though this one's still got the five filter caps before Marshall actually reduced the number of filter caps on the 2203, um, the preamp setup is the same as the 2204. So it has very high voltages, much higher than the early 80s spec 2203 through the preamp. So um, just to adjust that the easy way, because I don't have a spare filter cap to use here to split the filtering between the uh, V2 and V1 like I did in the 2204 video. Um, not without some pretty major work. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to drop the voltage down. So I've replaced this 10K dropping resistor here between the screen supply and phase inverter supply to a 22K resistor. That's a 2 watt resistor. So it'll be fine. And the other thing that I have just discovered on closer inspection, and I heard it first, right, because I've actually taken this amp in and just given it a quick test um, in my studio area, and I'm just listening to it and thinking, where's where's the bite, right? Adjusting the gain pot, I'm like, hmm, doesn't sound like there's a bright cap. <laughs> sure enough, here it is, right? Someone's taken it out. To make matters worse, they just snipped it out. So to re put the bright cap in again, I've had to clean out. These are the legs. Don't know if you can see that. There you go. These are the legs of the bright cap that was still in on the PCB. 
which is like, you know, okay, cool, good on you. If you're going to take it out, take it out properly. Just snip it out. Um, right, so I'm going to put a 1 nanofarad ceramic back in here. And I reckon the sand will start to sound like um, what I'm intending. Let's do it. All right, we're going to check the node voltages on this now. Now that I've put the 22K drop-in resistor here, I want to check. I'm looking for phase inverter supply of somewhere between 300 and 330 volts DC. And then that should cascade through the rest of the amp kind of, you know, in the right ballpark. You can see I've got the bright cap in here now, the one nanofarad ceramic cap there. Um, I'm looking forward to cranking that up, see how it sounds. So the amp's actually out of standby now. So let's take a few readings. I'll go straight to uh, our plate voltage here on pin three. Okay. So let's call that 450. Eight, 457 and a half, I'll round it up, 458. Uh, screen supply node, 450, 456, uh, on the actual screen pin, okay, pin four. Here's the one side of the 22, that's the screen supply, right? So let's have a look at this phase inverter. 308, okay, so as, as I said, between 300 and 330. Pretty happy with that, because I'd prefer it to be on the lower side, actually. Uh, coming through to the side of the final 10K dropping, and this is the now this um, node that is supplying the preamp. V1, and if I sneak in here, let's get the reading on V1, A, 225. Okay, I actually had a look at my video, so my 2204 that I converted back to, you know, 1980, 81 spec, uh, my voltage on V1, A, right on the plate there, was 200 volts so just a little bit over that the reason for that is because I've just got the 110k remember I if you consult that video you'll see that I've configured it so there's two 10k dropping resistors between the phase inverter and uh, V1 and in this configuration there's just the one but I think that's going to be close enough right let's um let's see how this sounds now I think all right, guys, it's a new day here in Melbourne, Australia. I finished the mods to the 2203 this morning, um, moving this into Jake E. Lee spec, right? So let's have a listen to how it sounds straight out of the gate. I've got the amp dialed in um, exactly as I had it when I did the stock test. The only difference is the bass. I brought the bass pot down to 11 a.m. rather than midday. The reason being is that now that it's got a fixed depth, circuit added to the negative feedback stage of the amp you know you can you want to bring that base back a little bit otherwise uh, it can get a bit heavy in the bottom let's have a listen to how it sounds <laughs>
forgiving under the fingers it's still you know it's still a jcm 800 in that regard right it's not silky silky smooth and really compressed it's not like that at all um but lowering, lowering the voltages and increasing the gain through that second gain stage i think you know does make the amp a little bit more uh forgiving more whilst retaining a bit of that you know core jcm 800 bite um you know, there is more gain in this amp now. It's not massively more, but it's definitely more, and it's got more grind in the bottom end. I can really feel that and, and, and hear it coming through. So for a final test, I bought in uh, a super overdrive model, uh, SD1 model on the X here. I've got the um, drive all the way down. It's on like 0.2. I've got the level all the way up. I've got the tone at 5.5, so about 12.30. I've got the PCM80 here. The lexicon up and running it's um after the amp to give some uh, stereo delay or some pan delays is the is the uh preset uh that it's on and um so let's have a listen to how this thing sounds with a bit of a boosted front end <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 